One of the most powerful and underrated features of Nmap is the ability to run various scans in the Nmap scripting engine. We'll explore this and how to create your own Nmap scripts in this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. While Nmap is definitely the gold standard of network scanning and reconnaissance, it is a lot easier to use with a layer of automation. Now, if you want to try this, you can always run an existing Nmap script in the Nmap scripting engine. And this is really useful for automating certain things you might do all the time. But if you really want to be a effective hacker, then you should learn how to write your own scripts. And it turns out that they're fairly easy to write because they're done in a language called Lua, which is both common and pretty easy to work with. Now we're going to do our own example, which simply checks to see if a port is open. But you can get as creative as you want with writing your own rules and triggers so that you can tell the script to do whatever you want and maybe automate things that you do on a daily or maybe weekly basis. Now if you want to get started trying this, you'll need to have Nmap previously installed. And you can go back and see one of our previous guides on doing this so you can see how to set it up. Once you have it, this should be cross-platform. So as long as you can follow along and open up a script and a text editor so we can write in Lua, then you should be able to follow along with this guide. Once you have uh, Nmap ready to go, then we can begin. To get started with the Nmap scripting engine, let's take a look how it works before we modify anything at all. Now in this uh, Nmap command, we are searching on ports 80 and 443 on the Priceline.com website which is an awful travel service that we'll be using for this example. Now here we can type tac tac script and then indicate any script we want to run here. And we can just do this by name. We don't actually need to go and indicate the whole file path. Now I'm gonna show you the quick example of what a normal scan looks like versus when we add this script. So first let's run a normal one. And then after that, we'll take a look and see what it looks like with the included script. So we can see we only kind of get a yes, no answer as to the state of the HTTP port, but when we run it with this DNS brute forcing script as well, then we should get a lot more information about the target, which would be useful for a penetration tester looking to do something to this terrible, terrible service. Now moving on, I can go ahead and take a look at some of the basic uh, uh, the basics of Lua, which is the language that's behind these MAP scripts that are so useful. Now, I'm gonna go to this really helpful uh, REPL website, which is read, evaluate, print loop, um, which is uh, kind of like the foundation of Lua and the way that some of these embedded languages tend to work, like um, MicroPython or something like that. So Lua is intended for uh, basically being similar to C and really easy to use on Internet of Things devices or other embedded devices. So it's kind of like C in that kind of uh, like hierarchy of languages. And you can see here that it's actually pretty simple to use. This is a very simple thing I wrote in Lua, which is just designed to sort which of the numbers we provide is higher. And it's a way that you can take a look and see how some logic works in about uh, actually maybe 10 lines of code. So what is all happening here? Well, in Lua, we can define a variable pretty easily. Uh, in this case, we're just typing a equals and then io read, which is just asking the user to type in something here. So while this looks a little confusing, we can see that there's a whole bunch of stuff that happens before we even try to get something. Uh, this is actually all a function up here. And we can see where it ends by looking for the little end um, cue at the, the end of it there. But in general, in Lua, we can define a function, which is a little container of code, and then call it later in the code in order to make things all nice and compact. So the actual code running here is first printing, enter two numbers, then the user will put in a number for variable A, a number for variable B, and then this sort function will go ahead and print whatever the result is. So if we look at what happens when we pass two things into sort, we can see we define the function here uh, with the name sort. Uh, we tell it that it's a function. And then we say the two variables we're going to pass in here in order to uh, kind of play with them inside the script and decide which one we want to use. So that's A and B. 
So now that we've told uh, Lua that we're making a function, it's gonna be named sort, and then we're using variables A and B inside of it, we can go ahead and jump into our first conditional statement. So this just says if A is greater than B, then return A. Else, or if uh, that condition isn't met, aka if B is greater than A, return B. And then we end the function. Now what actually happens is if we return A, then it will go ahead and print A, and if we return B, it will go ahead and print B. So this is a really simple kind of sorting uh, script that we can run and see that it asks us to enter two numbers. We'll do four and 6,996, and you can see which one is larger. Now, this is a very, very simple Lua script, but I just want to show you how, how easy it is to write something in this language. And if you want to do something very simple, like check to see if a port is open, then it's relatively to simple, uh, simple to do this inside a Lua script. So let's go ahead and look at an example that will actually work with Nmap. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to this nano window I have open, and this is our example that we are going to be working with today. Now I'm naming this uh, testy.nse, uh, and that stands for Nmap Scripting Engine. Now in the Nmap Scripting Engine, there's a couple of different th uh, scripts. There's a couple of different pieces that you'll need to be aware of. First is the head, which is basically responsible for the metadata and explains all the information about what the script is for and who wrote it. Next are the rules, and this is where you kind of set all the conditions that the script will test for. And these are kind of, uh, I think of like triggers, which then you can attach an action to later on. In the last section, actions, you can attach pretty much whatever you want to the rules or triggers that you set in the rule section. Meaning in this example, we're going to be looking to see if the port is open. And then if it is, we're going to be returning an action, just printing this port is open. Now this is a really simple script, but let's take a look at what it's doing. First, it's establishing a port role, which means we're doing something based on the status of a port. Then we're passing in the host and then uh, the port number of the particular scan we're running. And then depending on whether or not the port protocol of TCP is listed as open, we'll go ahead and pass that to the second part, which says this port is open if that is true. Now, this is a very basic example and is pretty redundant because we'll generally get to see if this is open or not anyway, but it still gives you an example of how these sorts of things are created with a rule and then an action. So you can see how Lua is kind of structured and then make up some of your own ideas for how you might want Nmap to work for you. Now to save this, I can press Control X and we're going to need to go into this folder here, user, share, nmap, and scripts, in order to save this file and make sure we can access it via nmap. And if you're curious to see what else is in here, we can type ls once we're inside, and wow, there are a lot of different scripts that we can use with nmap. And many of these are very useful, so I encourage you to check these out if it's something else that you're interested in, or if you wanna draw some inspiration from one of these scripts for your own Lewis script. Now let's go ahead and run that original command, only this time we'll use one that we did ourselves. I'll go back to my other terminal window. And let's go ahead and run that same scan on priceline.com, but this time instead of the DNS brute, we will use the Lua script that we just wrote. Now we don't need to do the dot uh, uh, nmap scripting engine here. We can just go ahead and write the name of the script since it's in the correct folder and nmap should know where to look for it. And there we go. While this is a little bit redundant, we have written our own nmap script, which has its logic that is dependent on the result of the port that we chose to scan. Now this is a simple but powerful example of how you can put together your own Lua scripts and use them in tools like nmap. And there are several other security tools that you can do this with as well. As you can see, Lua is a simple and easy language to work with, and it's not just applicable to Nmap scans. In addition, it's also used by Wireshark. So if you get comfortable writing your own Lua scripts, you can also use them for other types of security tools. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or feedback on the show, send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.